This is The Digital Human. This week, stories. Have they changed with the digital age? I mean, the thing about the Internet is it's really a chameleon. It's really, it really can be everything. It's, uh, it's type, it's uh, video, it's audio, and it's completely interactive and participatory. So it allows for, uh, in, in terms of storytelling, it allows us to, to make use of all of these tools in uh, really interesting and fascinating combinations. My name's Kayla Rohde, and I'm here with Frank Rose, a contributing editor at Wired and the author of The Art of Immersion. So The Art of Immersion is basically a book about how the Internet is changing storytelling. And as I was working on it, I came to realize that every time a new communications medium comes along, it takes people 25 or 30 years to figure out what to do with it, to develop a sort of grammar of storytelling that's appropriate. And, you know, with cinema, the motion picture camera was invented around 1890, and it was 1915 before you had films that really consolidated all of the things that we take for granted now, like uh, points of view shots and cuts and pans and fades. Just these things that seem really obvious now all had to be invented. You know, there's always, with any industry that is faced with, uh, you know, sort of radical technological change, um, there's always this tension between, you know, holding it back and continuing to make money the old way um, and, uh, and blowing things up and, uh, you know, taking a, taking a leap into the future. Well, you know, guess which model usually wins? Um, and, you know, guess how many companies go out of business as a result? It's slowly dawning on the ad industry that they need to move from uh, a situation where uh, people try actively to avoid their ads to a situation where people are so engaged by their ads that they pass them along. It's my pleasure and honor to be able to introduce today's keynote speaker, Frank Rose. They said that music was like blue jeans, and you wouldn't steal blue jeans, would you? Well, no, you wouldn't. But the truth is that music is not like blue jeans. <laughs> and I can prove it. On the left, you see a pair of blue jeans. <laughs> On the right, you see a digital music file. Now, you notice that the music is completely immaterial. It's just some electrons rattling around inside a computer. The record labels were not actually in the business of selling music. That was probably the source of their confusion. They were in the business of selling CDs, which are, in fact, kind of like blue jeans. CDs are something that lost value, not gained it from being shared. And the label saw no reason to change. They didn't realize that they were moving from a world in which they sold stuff to a world in which they were selling an experience. The question I'll leave you with now is, who's going to figure out this next step? Who's going to make the leap? Who's going to, out of the collision between stories and games, construct a new grammar that will make sense to all of us? And that's, I think, what we're here to find out. Thank you.